He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy. Monty Python's Life of Brian. If you've seen it, you certainly haven't forgotten it. But what made Monty Python's Life of Brian so controversial? Where was the film actually banned? And was Life of Brian actually blasphemous? Welcome to Do You Remember? I am Nostalgic Nick. After the blockbuster success of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the Pythons decided to follow that up with the greatest story never told. But when a studio head got very nervous when he finally read the script, well, the quiet Beatle became the film's savior after EMI pulled the plug. Seriously, the story behind the scenes is as crazy as the film itself. But before we crack open the gospel according to Monty Python, please hit that thumbs up icon to show us some support, and subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new video. Now, the Pythons insist that Life of Brian wasn't intended to be blasphemous. And before I begin, I'd like to make that same claim about this video. Alright, enjoy. What was that? I think it was Blessed Are the Cheesemakers. In the beginning, Monty Python and the Holy Grail grossed more than any British film screened in the US in 1975, and the press was eager to know about their next project. Eric Idle jokingly told reporters their next film would be entitled Jesus Christ's Lust for Glory, and that became the Python's stock response each time that question was asked. They also considered but ultimately rejected the title Brian of Nazareth because they didn't want to confuse audiences. Oh, me? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. The film was shot on location in Tunisia and reused several sets from Jesus of Nazareth. In the world of Monty Python, there are no sacred cows and any subject is fair game. But director Terry Jones said there was very little to ridicule in Jesus' life, and they went where the comedy was during the writing process. Jones claimed the movie wasn't about what Christ was saying, but about the people who followed him in that Brian wasn't blasphemous, but heretical. The Pythons first considered making Brian the 13th Apostle, who was always late for critical moments in the life of Christ, but they settled on a story about a boy from the same village who's constantly mistaken for the Messiah. In keeping with how Monty Python did things, six cast members portrayed 40 different characters, and John Cleese had his eyes on the title role. But Graham Chapman was so eager to play Brian that he finally came to terms with his alcoholism, and the rest of the Pythons convinced Cleese he would be missed if he didn't play several of the ensemble roles. Terry Jones directed the film, and Terry Gilliam served as the production designer. George the Redeemer. Production was set to start on Life of Brian, but EMI backed out at the last minute because a studio head, Bernard Delfont, well, he considered the script blasphemous. According to Terry Gilliam, they pulled out on the Thursday, and the crew was supposed to be leaving on the Saturday. Disastrous. It was because they read the script, finally. Eric Idle and producer John Goldstone headed to California in a desperate attempt to secure some financing. And that's when Idle suggested contacting former Beatle and recent LA transplant George Harrison. According to Terry Jones, when Eric rang George and asked, what can we do? George said, well, you know, when the Beatles were breaking up, Python kept me sane, really, so I owe you one. George Harrison created handmade films and pawned his home and office building to personally raise four million because he wanted to see the movie. Eric Idle would claim it was the highest price ever paid for a movie ticket. What scenes were cut from Life of Brian? Several scenes were cut for time, including a scene with three shepherds who missed the angel's arrival because they're busy talking about sheep. I love sheep and also a segment showing the attempted kidnapping of Pilate's wife. The Pythons also cut all but one scene involving Otto, who leads a group of Jewish zealots who all wear a graven image that combines a swastika and the Star of David. The only scene that made the final cut was when Otto appeared at the crucifixion as the leader of that suicide squad. The scenes were cut on the pretext that they slowed the film down, 
and several cast members admitted that the analogy of Nazism and extreme Zionism, even if played for laughs, would likely affect their distribution hopes. Terry Gilliam was against cutting Otto's scenes, and in the Python's autobiography by the Pythons, he said, quote, Listen, we've alienated the Christians, let's get the Jews now. But plenty of rabbis were successfully offended even without the controversial character. In an open letter to Variety, Rabbi Abraham Hecht said the film was blasphemous, sacrilegious, and a possible incitement to violence. Where was Life of Brian banned? When Life of Brian premiered in the USA, the protests were great for ticket sales and created so much buzz the release was expanded from 200 to 600 screens. However, the Pythons were concerned about being prosecuted for blasphemy if they screened the film in the UK. Conservative activist Mary Whitehouse was determined to clean up the media and had previously waged wars against The Exorcist and Doctor Who, for whatever reason. You're gonna sit there wallowing in self-pity, I'll bite your nose. In 1977, White House received a copy of an erotic poem published in the magazine Gay News about a homosexual relationship between Jesus and a Roman centurion, and sued the publisher for blasphemy. White House v. Lemon was the last successful blasphemy trial in the UK and publisher Dennis Lemon received a nine-month suspended sentence and a fine. When several Life of Brian script pages were leaked to White House during production, she said it, quote, was the dirtiest thing I had seen in a long time. After her organization began crusading against the film, the Pythons reached out to Sir John Mortimer, that same attorney who represented Dennis Lemon. Instead of advice, Mortimer told them the film was righteously funny but he did suggest cutting the scene where a cured leper refers to Jesus as Bloody do good up. Now the film's censors were a completely different story. The reviewers said it was one of the funniest films they had ever seen and passed it with a AA certificate in just a few days. No one under 14 would be allowed to view the film. But of course, that wasn't good enough for many communities, who banned the film from local cinemas. The undeterred fans who lived in those local areas soon organized carpools and caravans to out-of-town screenings. After Norway banned the film, it was subsequently promoted in Sweden as the film that is so funny that it was banned in Norway. The town of Aberystwyth, Wales, finally lifted its local ban after cast member Sue Jones Davies was elected mayor. Was Life of Brian the most blasphemous film ever? Oh no, sir! <laughs> Very well! John Cleese and Sir Michael Palin often joked about all the religious denominations protesting the film, and they said, quote, We've brought them all together for the first time in 2,000 years. Cleese and Palin appeared on the BBC to participate in a televised debate with Catholic Bishop Mervyn Stockwood and broadcaster Malcolm Muggeridge, who agreed to view the film and discuss it with the Pythons. The program was hosted by Tim Rice, who wrote the lyrics for the controversial rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar. And the debate was pretty intense. Master debaters Stockwood and Muggeridge argued that Life of Brian openly mocked the life of Christ and it was a 10th-rate movie, unworthy of an educated man. When Muggeridge claimed Christianity was responsible for all of the greatest events in human history, Cleese asked if that included the Spanish Inquisition. No one was expecting that. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! The Pythons claimed Life of Brian wasn't about Jesus' life, and it was a satirical commentary about his followers and people who don't think for themselves. Cleese claimed the sermons he heard as a child personally insulted his intelligence and said the film encouraged viewers to take a critical view of the things they're told. As the show was wrapping up, Bishop Stockwood told Cleese, quote, Get your 30 pieces of silver, well, I, I, I'm quite sure. <laughs> the British comedy series Not the Nine O'Clock News parodied the debate a few days later with Rowan Atkinson playing a bishop debating whether or not Jesus making fun of Monty Python was blasphemous. Well, I certainly didn't expect the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> From the screen to the stage, Eric Idle partnered with composer John Duprez in 2005 to lovingly rip off Monty Python and the Holy Grail. 
and more than 2 million people saw that Tony Award winning Spam a Lot during its initial run of 1,575 performances. After a 2021 film adaptation fell through, John Cleese announced he was developing Life of Brian into a stage play. During a 2022 table read, the cast members advised Cleese to cut the Loretta scene, where a man asked to be called Loretta and talks about wanting to give birth. Cleese told them he had no intention of doing so, calling the request ridiculous. Cleese later tweeted that the producers tend to be scaredy cats and they don't remember that the protests in NYC when Brian was released meant we never needed to do publicity. The Monty Pythons agree that they were at their peak with Life of Brian, which they believed was their finest writing effort. The script was written in sunny Barbados and they enjoyed agreeable weather while shooting in Tunisia. There were also no last minute directorial changes and the Pythons were so relieved that Graham Chapman did get his drinking problem under control. Life of Brian played continuously for 75 weeks in London's West End and its box office success inspired multiple religious comedies in the early 1980s. The film was also theatrically re-released in 2004 for its 25th anniversary. Funnily enough, just two months after the theatrical release of The Passion of the Christ, editor Steven Schneider included Life of Brian in his book 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die. And in 1999, it was chosen number one in Channel 4's The 50 Greatest Comedy Films. All right, that's been our look at the gospel according to Monty Python. But now we really need to hear from you. Did you find Life of Brian blasphemous? Or were you one of the heathens who lined up to buy a ticket back in 1979? Who is your favorite python? What's your favorite Monty Python movie? Tell me your favorite quote, the best scene. Just get in the comments and talk to us. If you enjoyed our video today, please hit that thumbs up icon to show us some support. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss a memory. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching. And remember to always look on the bright side of life. Always.